Hi everyone, welcome to Our Life V3. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the technical aspect of our road travels. Yeah, we hit the road with a lot of gear, but now that we're doing some foreign travel and we're going to be overseas for two years, we really want to talk about what we're doing with the technical aspect of this, right? I don't know. What do you mean by technical aspect? Well, how much goop and electronics we're going to carry with us in our backpacking world. Yeah, we really have to limit. We do. Yeah, weight and size. Weight and size. Um, I mean, we're really going to cover everything from phones, computers, cameras, Wi-Fi, technical, Garmin, GPS, all that fun stuff today. So let's get started, why don't we? Let's okay. talk a little bit about phones. Phones, the things that everybody can't live without. Yeah. It's, it's harder these days to live without one. I mean, we could. We could technically live without one, but I think that there would be some unhappy people within our lives if we didn't have them with us. Yeah, it's important to have that communication item, but once you go overseas, of course, you don't have Verizon or Sprint or whatever plan you've had here. So first lesson with that, you don't have to have the greatest, latest phone to be happy when you're overseas. Even we don't have the latest and greatest phones by any means. When we were in India, it was amazing how many people were using first generation phones and just iPhones and having a great time with them. Everything was successful. So let's talk about how to keep in touch when you have your phone overseas. And incidentally, I'll start with I'm bringing my older two and a half year old iPhone 7 Plus. Yes, and I am bringing my Samsung Galaxy S7 and I'm contemplating bringing the S6 as a backup. When you get overseas, you're going to want to add a new SIM card. The first lesson is don't buy the first SIM card you see at the airport. The closer you are to a travel spot, the more you're going to spend. Just as an example, I know the last time we bought a SIM card in a foreign country, at the airport they were 20 euros a card. In the city they were 5 euros a card. That's quite a difference. Quite a difference. Mm -hmm. Along that path to remember just because it's cheaper doesn't mean it's always better. A lot of the cards will start out real cheap but not include any data or phone time and you get charged per whereas the cards you pay 10 euros for or New Zealand dollars or dong or whatever we're going to now will include some time and data which will help lower your cost in the end run. As soon as you get on the plane or as soon as you leave the country or whatever you're doing out turn your data data and phone services off you could get somewhere if you leave those on and say you land in spain and all of a sudden it starts trying to connect you're going to start getting some roaming charges that you don't want to have so until you get over and get a sim card or on wi-fi leave that data and phone roaming off uh, another tip for security Turn your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi off. Do not leave them in auto mode. Two things are going to happen with that. One, it's a security issue. People can hack your phone through Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And the second is your phone will start trying to update and constantly connect, which is going to help drain your battery really quickly if you don't have those off. Yeah, especially if you, there's nothing to connect to. It's constantly out there just searching and searching for um, so your battery life just goes down. At least half. Think about all the apps that you have on your phone and what you truly need. I like to use the Starbucks app as an example. I love to pre-order my coffee, have it waiting for me, hit the little button and boom, I'm paid for and out the door. But nobody overseas is going to take that application because it's in US dollars. So even if they have an app, I would have to have the foreign app. They're not going to do a pre-order with it. It's not going to be able to pay. So why would I keep that app as an open security risk, constantly trying to download updates and leave my money in the U.S. exposed? So consider the apps that you're carrying, delete what you don't need, or at least shut off the update data to them. So while we're on applications, what do you think is the best apps to carry with you? I think that um, Google Translate <laughs> yes. is, is very helpful. Okay, it's not perfect and it's not expected to be perfect by any means. Uh, but okay, maybe we expect it to be perfect, but it's not. Um, right. there's a there's quite a bit of that's lost in translation, but at least <laughs> but at least we can read menus, we can read signs, uh, we can 
talk in English to it and show it in their language. If we just show our screen, it's, it's helped us quite a bit uh, maneuver in countries when we run into non-English speakers and we just are struggling with the language ourselves. Make sure you download the languages before you leave the U.S. or when you have a good steady Wi-Fi. That way you're not, you're not dependent on data when you're trying to translate stuff. It's when we were in Japan and you go to the 7-Elevens and you'd be looking at these sandwiches and thinking, what are these things? And you're about to pick one up and then you use yes. the Google Translator and it looks at it and it goes, oh, you're about to eat a seaweed sandwich. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Next on the line, I would also put in another Google product, not to constantly feed Google, but Google Maps. Download the maps for the cities you're going to. If you download the map in advance, especially for the areas you're going to tour, they sit on your phone for at least 30 days and you have the ability to search for directions, locations, stores. Yeah, can't, you, can't you pin like your um, hotel or something you even can. before you go? So it's, it's all in there and ready to go when Absolutely. you just... Makes a big difference. Yeah. Another important thing is having some kind of a app to record your activities. Some people like Evernote, I think they're okay, but I'm a fan of just even a text pad. There's nothing like going somewhere and you get back after a month of being on the road, or in our case, two years on the road, and you go, where were we? <laughs> And if you had just made a note that said, hey, on Tuesday the 8th, we happen to be at Agra Ford in the middle of Agra and uh, blah, blah, blah. Right. Right. Which brings me to, I'm just going to throw this one in there. And I, I know that we should probably talk about it when we get to the cameras. But you should always make sure that your date and time is correct to the local on yes. your camera. Um, Absolutely. That, that way, when you're comparing your notes to the pictures, you can say, ah, yes, that's what that was. So video making, of course, it's important for us to communicate where we've been. We love sharing with you guys, but really for us, it's about self-reflection, memos, and sharing with family. And if it benefits somebody else, hey, that's a win. We're not in this to get rich. We're in it to share about our travels and things we learn. Uh, with that in mind, we've always used the Adobe product, and it is a slick, sweet product. But while we're now retired and on the road, I don't want to pay $800 a year for this product. It's licensed that way. So we Is moved, it that much? It is that much. <coughs> so wow. they, were, they were giving it to us for $50 a month and then sent us our renewal and said, your new renewal price is $89 a month. Insane. Yeah. 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 It went away. It went away. <laughs> There are some really great products that you can use out there. I recommend using GIMP. GIMP is freeware and it does a really great job. It's a little bit of a learning curve to get used to where their buttons are, but once you got it down, it can do almost everything that you can do in Photoshop. It does enough of what we need it to do. Absolutely. And then for video, which is Mary's specialty. <laughs> yeah. we, we used to use the Adobe Premiere Pro and we have recently started using DaVinci Resolve. And DaVinci Resolve has two versions. One is a free version that you're absolutely free to download and use. And it is a, it's a very heavily equipped, really good program. Or they have the paid version, which is $2.99, one-time license for life. So now would be a good time to even discuss computers that we carry. <laughs> it's all about the power, the weight, the size, and the battery. It really is. Uh, we used the Apple product for a long time, nice 15 inch MacBook Pro. By the time I carried that thing around and its power cord and everything else, we were hauling four and a half pounds of stuff and discs and drives and it yeah. was crazy. Yeah, it, it doesn't use, you think four and a half pounds, that's not that much, but you add that to everything else that we're carrying around and it's, it's heavy. I just moved over to the Surface Pro 7 which is a 13 inch screen. I forgot how to turn it on. Nice 13 inch screen, pen based, easy to navigate, easy to use. And it weighs about a pound and a half tops, including this ruggedized case that I can go with. It, it's not quite powerful enough to make videos on with its i5 processor. 
But as far as note taking, journaling, working on our website, editing photos, it is everything that I needed to do at a much lighter weight. And I have the, the HP Spectrum. What I really like about this computer is you can flip the keyboard around and I've got a tablet and is that upside down? It might be. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. So, oh, it has your name on it. It's probably not Ooh. good. The, the HP Spectre 360, not only it works like a tablet, you can watch movies on it, you can edit videos. It really is a powerful i7 computer. Nice, uh, I think we got the 13 inch screen with the one terabyte drive. Right, and it is, uh, I can't remember how much it was, I think it was under two pounds, right? It's under two pounds, under it's two like 1.7. Uh, it's almost two if you include the power cord for it. Yeah, yeah, so lightweight enough. So between the two of ours, we're yeah, about we're, three and a half, four pounds total weight in computers. Which is less than just um, our Apple MacBook Pro. Yeah. Same with these. You're not always going to be on Wi-Fi, but when you are, you don't want a bunch of updates happening. Make sure before you leave the United States, keep your security up to date. Make sure your Windows software or Apple, if you carry that, are all up to date and your apps are all up to date. Speaking of Wi-Fi when you're out, just because the coffee place or the, whatever you're at, the hotel says we have free Wi-Fi in the lobby, doesn't necessarily mean you ought to be trying to connect to it. There are a lot of shady places across the world, and if you don't have good connection and security, you shouldn't be hooking to the Wi-Fi. And it's not even the, the place itself. I mean, I think the places are innocent. It's the people that are visiting the place that might have nefarious, various intentions. Please, before you travel, or even in the United States, buy yourself a VPN. You may hear it on the radio all the time, but the virtual private network is a must have for any travel nowadays. Um, I think ours were only paying about $4 a month because we bought a three year contract. But the important thing to look for was a VPN service that is worldwide has servers across the galaxy, so you're not trying to connect from, say, Thailand to the United States and back. It goes through the other servers. It does use the full 256 or better encryption. And in our case, we wanted a VPN that allows for data streaming, because if I want to see a movie in Thailand, I want to see a movie in Thailand. Or if I want to do a YouTube or upload a video, we don't want to be limited in our streaming. So since we're going to be gone for an extended period of time, we want to keep our U.S. phone numbers. There was a, a few different options for keeping that number, you know, but since we are going to switch our SIM cards, we're going to try Google Voice and see how that works. Uh, I can't say anything about it other than read a couple of articles. We're going to give it a shot and see how it goes. So we'll report back. The downside from what we heard is that you don't actually receive a phone call. Everything goes straight to a voicemail and you're alerted there's a voicemail for you that you can then call back from another number or other. However, you retain your number. It doesn't get slotted out to the next person in a store buying a phone. And so for this trip, we decided to upgrade our navigation. So we upgraded to the Garmin 66i. The I stands for inReach, which is uh, something that was important to us. It has the SOS button. So anywhere you're at, you can flip that button, toggle an SOS, and alert globally an emergency service that you're stranded, hurt. But it does go off, it works off of satellite systems. It doesn't work off cell service. So we could be in a location where we don't have any cell service at all. And we can still get in touch um, it, with if we're in danger or we've been um, hurt in some manner. Or like, somebody around us got hurt and needs to communicate. Yeah. So. yeah, like big time danger. It's it's like I'm hurt so badly I can't get myself out of here. It's not like I sprained my ankle. And... Yeah, this is not, this is not, hey, call a buddy and let him know. This is 911 type equipment. But the satellite service also offers texting capabilities. So even if you're out there where that SIM card's not working, you're a million miles away from another city and a Wi-Fi signal, you can still get a text and let your family know that you're okay. Yes. It's not the cheapest text in the world. No, but it's it's worth it. And it's something that uh, we'll probably use. We'll probably have a standardized text when we're out. 
um, on our hiking adventures just to let um, our family know that we are okay. When we did all the reviews, this really won hands down on communication waypoints. We can download maps. And if I'm in a Wi-Fi region, I can actually download bird's eye graphics. So if I want to see that there is a mountain in front of me, this does have the topographic map. I can do satellite imagery on it. I can put waypoints all day. The battery will easily last through a day and a half hike or better. And it weighs about a pound, so not right. too bad weight-wise. I should say there's other emergency features to this, such as there is a flashlight, so I can use this as a flashlight. I can also use it as a signaling homing device and turn on an SOS beacon to shine. So if I'm stranded and an air aircraft are looking for us. So there's a lot of really cool things to do with that. Mm -hmm. It's the Swiss Army knife of GPSs. Camera gear. Camera gear. You know, we always use our cell phones to take pictures. Quick and pictures. Things video and things like that but you know for the for the most part I like the GoPro yes you do I I am a big fan it's small it's lightweight this is the GoPro 6 black and are um, you going to upgrade that I am but <laughs> I will talk about that a little bit and I do have a gimbal on it and why I have to use a gimbal is because doesn't stabilize video at all. So if you saw any of our Israel um, video, that was all shot with the GoPro 6, this one. The GoPro 8 Black is what we're going to go with. And I think we're gonna go with two of them. Yes, one for the front, one for the back. Yes, there's a GoPro that does that in 360. But if you've ever tried to edit 360 equipment, you know that's a memory hog. Yeah, and, and our, you've just seen our computers, are they're just not capable. And we don't want to drag them down right. with that sort of stuff. We want to spend our time out enjoying. <laughs> now, GoPro 8s are amazing for capturing those hikes and bikes and those underwater shots and everything. But sometimes when you're in nature, there is just beauty. And that cannot be captured with a little itty bitty camera the same way that you can with a big one. I've always been a Nikon fan, and lately we went with the Nikon P1000. This bad boy will actually zoom out to a ridiculous 3000 zoom. I can get a picture of the moon with this, but it also weighs about six pounds. And it's so large. So we, we just upgraded to the Sony a6400 camera. This one and a half pound camera is beautiful 24 megapixels megapixel sensor same sensor that you find in their more expensive a7 camera setup it has 11 frames a second shooting burst so i can shoot just non-stop at 11 frames a second without buffering uh, it's one of the first selfie vlogging cameras that you can actually run video for over 30 minutes without frying the internal mechanisms of the camera battery in life 4K. in 4k mm -hmm. yeah absolutely um, it just seemed like the right idea for those who are going to say, but Steve and Mary, the a6600 is about to come out next month. You're absolutely right. It is. I may regret buying this camera because it's going to go down another couple hundred in price. And that will it. only be my, that will be my only regret, but it's important to catch those beautiful shots in the 24 megapixel when when God presents you a sunset or a beachfront or that moment when your beautiful wife is like doing something spectacular, you really want to catch that shot in full detail. And that's not on a cell phone or a GoPro. So. Yeah. And the nice, the, the nicest part about the 6400 and actually we're shooting this video with it. So this is our, this is our test video. First video with a 64. Yeah. So, um, we're hoping that it turns out quite nice for us. So what we were trying to do was get one camera to do everything for us to do, uh, while we're out walking and taking our hikes to, to vlog with while we're walking. And, and what we've come to the conclusion, there is, is no that <laughs> that we just couldn't we can't afford that camera i mean there is one out there but we just don't want to spend the money on yeah. it black magic makes some really <laughs> incredible cameras for six to eight thousand dollars and that's not here yeah so in in this a6400 it doesn't have the most stable 
uh, Optical picture stabilization. Yeah, picture quality as you're walking and talking to it, which is why we're going with the GoPro for that aspect. But, but from a tripod or shooting aspect, aspect or just being out in nature, uh, we've seen some incredible photography and some really decent video out of it. So yeah, so good job, baby. Yes. Whew, that was that was a lot of analysis. So that was a lot of detail about what we're doing technically to be ready for the road. I'd really like to say in conclusion, we're far from the experts. We're just telling you what works for us. If you go out to YouTube or any of the things, there's a million opinions and a lot of people that are better qualified than us. But if you're just average Joes working on a budget like us, this is what really worked for us. I would say between all the cameras and tech, we didn't spend a lot of money. We were able to reuse what we had on some things, able to get things that we considered important, but still leave a lot of cash open for the fun and thrill. Because in the end of the day, remember this one very important thing. Adventure is in front of you and not behind a screen. Well said. Well said. With that in mind, thanks for joining us. We hope you got something from this video. Until next time. Keep it between the lines. Safe travels, everyone. And don't forget to click like and subscribe if you want to see what goofy things we talk about next.